this video is going to be about alleles and the law of segregation. So we talked about in the previous video um, how different characters are going to have different traits, which would be, um, for example, if the character was flower color, the traits would be um, the actual color, so purple versus white. And so alleles are going to be the different versions of a particular gene. So for example, we'll have an allele for purple and an allele for white. So when we're thinking about alleles, there's two kinds that we need to think about. We have dominant alleles and recessive alleles. So dominant alleles are going to be the ones that are actually going to be expressed in the phenotype of um, an organism. So for example, if we have a dominant allele, which is represented by a capital letter, and a recessive allele, which is represented by a lowercase letter, um, this dominant one is going to be the one that's actually showing up in the phenotype. So a phenotype is going to be the actual um, appearance of an organism, so the outward appearance of that organism. So let's say this is for hair color, and so brown hair would be dominant to blonde hair, which would be recessive. And so if an individual was heterozygous, which means they have two different alleles, then this individual's phenotype would be brown hair because of the presence of this dominant allele. So other um, general terms to think about when we talk about alleles is the concept of a genotype. So a genotype is going to be what alleles an individual actually has present at a certain gene locus. So for example, this individual's genotype would be um, heterozygous because they have a dominant allele and a recessive allele, but their phenotype, if we're still talking about hair, would be brown hair because only this dominant allele is going to actually show up in the phenotype. And so um, I keep throwing around the word heterozygous, so that means we have two different alleles at this one locus, whereas if we had two of the same alleles, this would be homozygous. Homozygous and heterozygous. So now that we kind of understand how um, alleles are represented and what they are, um, we can talk about the law of segregation. So the law of segregation is going to say that two alleles for a particular trait are going to be separated during gamete formation and end up in different gametes. So basically, we know that in our bodies we have two copies of each chromosome, which means that we have two copies of each gene. And so the dominant allele in this case would be on one chromosome and the recessive allele would be on another chromosome. So during meiosis, when we're making our gametes, those chromosomes split up. So for example, one allele would go to this gamete over here and the other allele would go to the other gamete. And so that's the law of segregation, that these alleles will be segregated during gamete formation. And so using the law of segregation, we can kind of uh, predict what the uh, ratio of genotypes and phenotypes should be in um, an offspring from a certain parental uh, generation. So to do that, we're going to use a Punnett square. So for example, if we crossed these two individuals, because um, these alleles get segregated during gamete formation, they can make different uh, pairs and give rise to uh, offspring with different genotypes and phenotypes. So for example, this allele would be in its own gamete and this allele would be in its own gamete and the same would go for these two. So to do a Punnett square, you just uh, go down and then go across and combine those two letters in the same square. So for this first square, it would be a dominant gene and a recessive gene. And this one, it would be both lowercase and this one, again, it would be one uppercase, one lowercase, and then this one, again, two lowercase. So this is just a general um, Punnett square. But more specifically, we can use something called a test cross when we have an individual with an unknown genotype. So if we have an individual with an unknown genotype and we want to figure out what that genotype is, we can cross them with an individual that is homozygous recessive, which is mean they're going to have two lowercase alleles. And so by doing that, it can uh, help us to figure out what the genotype of that um, unknown individual is. Because if they have any sort of dominant alleles in there, it should show up in the offspring. But if they have all recessive alleles, then um, that will also show up in the offspring. So it's a really good way of helping us to figure out what the genotype of a particular organism is. 
I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.